and a very warm welcome to all our viewers. Today is the 10th lecture of this series, but the first of 2021. So a very happy new year. While I wish you a happy new year, but it will only be happy if you and I take action. Why? The worst impacts of climate change, flood, heat waves, forest fires, hurricanes, storms, loss of biodiversity, everything that directly impacts you and I could be reversible by 2030. That means we have nine years left. It sounds like a long time, but it really isn't. So you and I must take action. With that in mind, let us hear from our expert today, Ms. Christina Yeager, co-founder and managing director of the UNOS Environment Hub on her experiences of a social business dedicated to creating green social businesses. The UNOS Environment Hub is the global social business network creating solutions for the environmental crisis. Areas of activities include the transformation from linear to circular economy, working in the area of waste management and plastic recycling, carbon neutrality, preservation of biodiversity, promoting sustainable agriculture, clean energy, access to clean water and sanitation. To bring out her story, today we have with us well-known and well-respected professor, Abdul Annan Chaudhry, Dean of Business School and Economics, North South University, Bangladesh. Professor Hanan Chaudhry has long been involved with our social business network and encouraging students to be socially responsible citizens of the world. So thank you very much for being a part of the session today and discussing on this extremely important topic. Uh, thank you, Professor Yunus, um, for uh, your opening remarks, which you now may commence. Professor thank you. Thank you, Zainab. Uh, delighted to be here. Happy New Year to everybody. So we are just at the beginning of the first New Year 2021. I hope this would be a great year for all of us, for the humanity as a whole, and very important that the uh, we look back on 2020, what went wrong, what was the thing that has been revealed by 2020, so, so that we don't repeat those mistakes that we have done over years. And that's the subject that is so important today uh, of the things that we have done wrong. That's why beginning this year with uh, Christina Yeager, uh, with the environmental issues, there's just an appropriate way to open this year for all of us. And uh, Christina is known to us for a long time now. Uh, she came as a young girl from uh, Germany uh, to do the internship about uh, nine years back in uh, UNIS Center. And she got used to uh, knowing what we do, how we do it, and uh, that stuck in her mind. And she went back and started working with the GCL. And then uh, she has been with GCL for a long time, trying to understand what this is all about. She's passionate about environment. That's an important thing. It's not only activist. Uh, she's a passionate of doing things in a way so that it can make a start. We have been uh, talking about uh, during the pandemic about the three zeros again, because uh, these three zeros are the thing which came out very sharply during the pandemic period, which is still continuing. And number one is the uh, global warming. And global warming is a giant problem and it's getting worse every day. Uh, and I keep reminding people that today human being has become uh, uh, kind of a, uh, the most endangered species of this world. Uh, and uh, we must stop that process so that we don't have to become extinct on this planet. We want to be here with the full glory of human being, of creation and creating things uh, for the happiness of everybody else in, in this planet. So that's the way she always felt, but she wanted to make sure she does it the right way. And that's why she chose a social business as a methodology, how she can achieve that. And she understood that it has to be done and done in a very, uh, starting as can be very, as small as possible. And she did that. Now she has created an organization called UNOS Environment Hub. And uh, still continuing to do that and making it a bigger size, uh, taking the second step and the third step. And always as usual, uh, young entrepreneurs have lots of hurdles, lots of problems. She has been going through all of them. Uh, and we will hear all the stories from her, show how she began, what she's trying to do, or, in such a small initiative, such a small effort, how can this giant of a problem, which even eliminates the whole planet uh, from a whole human race on this planet, what can she do as a single person uh, making her effort? That's the story she will be telling and we are hearing, we'll be hearing about it. And that story will definitely inspire us all. And at the beginning of the year, we make a commitment that will not let that happen. We want to create a zero net carbon emission world. 
as soon as possible. That's our commitment, and we begin this commit with this uh, our conversation. And uh, thank you, Christina, for agreeing to uh, sub, uh, join us on this, uh, sharing your experience. And I want to thank uh, Professor Hanan Choudhury, who has been a great friend all along, and he's a great activist on social business from the very start when we make it. And she gave us all the opportunities to come into his universities, they're addressing the students, and he himself is a great activist and trying to link up other universities to make social business uh, happen in those universities, even creating social business centers, even social business centers. So I'm very happy to have you, uh, Hanan, uh, to come back and uh, conduct this uh, conversation. It's a very important conversation. It's a first conversation of the year, and I welcome you to begin this. And now the floor is yours, Hanan. All right, sir. Happy New Year, sir. Happy New May Year. May this new year bring hope and aspirations, good health, and be filled with joy and happiness for you and for all of us. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning in other parts of the world. Today's lecture series is the first lecture series in 2021, organized by, you know, Social Business Center on social business. And this is the 11th lecture series and uh, 10 of them actually happened in last year, very successfully. Today, we are going to actually talk to an individual who is very iconic in my view. And we are going to actually talk about today experiences of a social business, which is dedicated to creating social, green social businesses. And our guest is Christina Zeiger. She is the co-founder of Yonos Environmental Hub, is the global you know, social business network that creates solution for the environmental crisis. And she's also engaged in designing businesses for solving environmental problems. Miss Christina, you have been involved with Grameen Creatively of Germany for many years. You are quite familiar and an experienced individual now, I would say, in social business world. And you have so many things to tell us today, so many stories to share today with the audience, with our students, and also the participants, those who are sitting today in this webinar. At the very outset, I would like to hear from you about your journey, about the UNOS Environment Hub. What is the purpose and why was it uh, created? Why and how did you get involved with it? If you could briefly describe, we would appreciate that. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. And um, first of all, I would like to uh, say many thanks to Professor Yunus for inviting me and having me as a guest speaker for the first lecture in this year. And uh, I'm very excited about um, our common goal of working towards a world of, of zero net carbon emissions and uh, very excited for, for this new year and all of the objectives and goals that, that we have to achieve together. And uh, thank you, Professor Hanan, for the, for the introduction. And um, I'm much looking forward to our conversation. To, to start off with, with how I got involved and how we started UNOS Environment Hub. You already mentioned um, the Hub is the global social business network for developing social business solutions and uh, for the environmental crisis. And it is a spin-off from Grameen Creative Lab. Grameen Creative Lab as an organization has been involved over many years in bringing social businesses into new fields. And um, I dedicated myself towards the area of environment. Like I'm very passionate since uh, from a very early age about how we treat mother, mother earth uh, and our nature. I've written my diploma thesis on environmental policies. And I have a personal background in uh, through a project that I, I developed in um, turning plastic waste into 3D printing material. And with the support of Professor Yunus and Hans Reitz, the CEO of Grameen Creative Lab, we started to organize workshops, meetings, conferences, and um, held monthly talks on the topic of circular economy, of, of plastic recycling at our annual convenings, such as the Global Social Business Summit or Social Business Day. And we received massive feedback from, from all different kinds of stakeholders, from businesses, 
from um, uh, young people, from entrepreneurs, from universities. Everyone was acknowledging uh, the topic, the issue, the, the urge for, for doing something, the need for social business solutions. And everyone uh, also with, with the sense of um, how can you help us? How can we bring everyone together? How can we deploy solutions? And we created the Plastic Lab as a creative laboratory to start with one issue, which is the, the plastic challenge. Um, how can we solve the issue of a plastic overconsumption and production that is polluting our, our environment? And um, we did, uh, we organized stakeholder workshops, consultations, we went on field trips, we visited social business entrepreneurs already working in waste management on the ground in India and in other countries to learn from their solutions, to talk to the people affected through the people involved in these projects. We went to other countries such as Vietnam to, organ to, uh, to see and analyze the situation and what kind of solution could address the problem. We went to Colombia where we organized awareness creation activities uh, again, getting in contact with both consumers, with waste pickers, with businesses, and all of these inputs we have gathered in order to develop and design the social business programs that we now run at UNOS Environment Hub. And um, when we, um, uh, and not only on the on the plastic waste side, there were also many other topics that came out through the the, the, the last two years. Another very important topic is. Uh, the carbon um, uh, reductions, um, the, the one of the three zeros of Professor Yunus, how we can achieve um, zero net carbon emissions in, in which we um, had developed climate seed as a social business, for example. And um, all of these activities led to the decision to create um, Yunus Environment Hub and, and social business organization that is fully de dedicated towards empowering others to develop and implement social business solutions. Because in the end, we will need many, many, all of us to get involved in the topic in order to solve this big top topic of, of global warming and um, of our climate crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. Briefly, you have talked about your plastic lab at GCL. And from there, you have been actually contributing even transforming, uh, you know, uh, eight to uh, more into in circular economy. The plastic lab that you set up, you have been actually also piloting many projects that are truly very uh, pertinent in solving, uh, you know, environmental issues and also designing business plans, those things actually. I would like to know a few things about your current project that you are working with. For example, plastic is one thing that you are heavily focused on you are talking about plastic oceans and plastic, you know, due to plastic, uh, you know, environmental degradations and, you know, uh, what we call the um, problems related to environmental hazards. Um, how can we actually facilitate small and medium enterprises to achieve greater sustainability in the, with the, through the circular economy approach? Can you tell us anything and your project related to plastics and Amazonia fire, those things, if you can briefly explain to our audience. Sure, absolutely, yeah. So one of the undertakings around plastic waste um, was the creation of the Zero Plastic Waste City program, a program that um, we developed and that we implement together with the Alliance to and Plastic Waste which is a global alliance where uh, more than 50 multinational companies came together to um, commit themselves towards finding solutions to address plastic waste leakage in the environment. And we on our side, we put in together all of the know-how that we had gathered through the previous experience and the learnings from social business entrepreneurs on the ground, the ones who were engaged in working with the waste pickers on a, on, a, on, on a daily basis and putting this together into a modular social business program that will help us to create and design a concept that is highly replicable and scalable from one location to the other and where learnings can be transferred from one place to the other. Because as you were saying, at the moment we see 
many, many small projects that are really great, that have a, a good impact, that are working well, but they are on a small scale. And the question is, how can we scale these, these initiatives? How can we reach a, a bigger and more systemic impact in order to um, achieve um, an overall um, system change? And um, in zero plastic waste cities, we um, offer solutions to improve municipal solid waste management based on that model approach that I said that can be chosen and implemented depending on the current situation in each of the city in terms of the status quo, in terms of the different stakeholders in both informal and formal sector that are being engaged, as well as other partners that are already working on the ground. So that in order um, of what is already working on the ground can be accelerated and increased and where gaps are, we can come in with new social business solutions. Waste management alone um, is, um, it is not enough in achieving a circular economy. Waste management is only about handling the end of life of, of a product or of a packaging. A circular economy is a much wider and bigger topic that we need to address and needs to be complemented with waste management. We know that we need to end the plastic-based leakage, but in order to come to a circular economy, it requires an entire systemic transition of our economy from the current linear take, make, use and dispose system to a truly circular one, where we are stopping the depletion of our natural resources and where materials are being kept in circles. And as you know, there are two different circles, the biological ones and the technological one. And recycling in the technological circle is the very last step. There are several steps that come before recycling and we need to design for the business model around those cycles as well. That is about uh, repair, about reuse, about remanufacture, about refurbishment. And in the end also about prevention how can we prevent waste in the first place? And also rethinking ownership and business models, coming up with new business models where um, pro um, service, uh, sorry, product as a service, where we are not selling products to users, but a service so that um, the actual materials, the actual product remains in the hand of the manufacturers and it is in his or her interest and also responsibility to keep the materials as long as possible in the material cycle so that we can extend the product circle, the product life circle of products and materials. And uh, creating a circular economy is a very complex topic that requires the participation of everyone. It requires the participation of, of businesses, it requires the participation of consumers, of the government with corresponding policies, um, as well as, as, as entrepreneurs and startups in the system. So this needs to be an, an overall effort and social business play a very, very crucial role in a circular economy because the transition to a circular economy will also lead to a shift from industries where, where jobs will be moved and people might be set off their jobs. And we need to ensure that um, the transition is a socially responsible one, where these people are not becoming jobless, but where we can um, um, make sure that it's an integrative and um, socially inclusive approach. And this is where I see um, um, the role of social business. And um, also very important maybe to add on why is social business so important and relevant in the waste management sector? It is because that the majority, especially in, in the emergent economies, almost the entirety of the material that is currently collected for recycling is being collected by, by informal workers, by waste pickers, by rec pickers, um, by, by vulnerable groups that are being exploited. And social businesses um, um, uh, can help those people in, um, first of all, changing the image of these people on giving their dignity, but most of all, giving them the recognition and um, an improved um, income and uh, social and health benefits that, um, are, um, that, that they actually um, deserve 
and that will give them a, a dignified life. Thank you. Fascinating stories, actually. Uh, thank you. I think um, the world that we are living today is more fragile. We all know that. The, and also, if we see the, the collective benefit of global citizens like health, happiness, security, and sustainability are uh, all are at its bottom, actually. We realize how fragile our planet is during this pandemic very much. I would like to take uh, the audience even in a different direction because you, uh, Christina, you have been actually involved in peace building initiatives in uh, Colombia. What does the environment have to do with peace building? And is something shaping up in Colombia? Uh, if you would express, you know, in detail, you know, to us, the peace building activities that you do there. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I think there's a very strong connection between environment and peace building. Because if you think about, um, it's not just the, the absence of political, economic or social rights that lead to conflict, it's also the absence of environmental um, um, rights and environmental, um, um, the, the environmental health. Um, we have many um, uh, climate migrants already today if I'm looking at the African continent and other parts of the world, where places have simply become unlivable for people because the natural resources have depleted or where because of the climate change that is already happening, um, uh, it is not possible for them anymore to live or to sustain a living because agriculture or other means of businesses are simply not, not possible to undertake anymore. So that's overall where I see a very strong connection between those two topics. And if we are looking at Colombia particularly, um, there is um, a very strong connection between um, um, the environment, um, also between the Amazonas and other um, uh, natural, um, um, natural parks and, and, and forests. Um, where deforestation is happening, not just because of extensive cattle raising or illegal mining that we also see in other countries, but it's because of the um, conflict that was happening and the grow of illicit crops. And um, by the way, the grow of illicit crops has, has risen, I think almost four times since the signing of the peace agreement in 2016, because now since the peace agreement is in place, those places who were originally under the coal, under the, the control of guerrilla groups are no longer present. And hence the race of those illicit crops has gone up. And um, with the programs that we have in Colombia, we are supporting social business entrepreneurs that are both contributing with their business model to peace building as well as to the environment. And um, this can be, can be manifold. We have entrepreneurs that are working in the agriculture sector, particularly with the objective of giving benefits to the local farmers and the people where um, they are not, um, where it, it doesn't become interesting for them anymore to grow illicit crops because they are receiving um, enough income and benefits through the growing of, of, of legal crops. Or where we have social business entrepreneurs bringing together um, two different target groups populations that used to be in conflict. One project, for example, is working with um, Afro-Colombians, like the Black community and an indigenous community, which is seen very rarely of, of, of working together. Um, or we see social business entrepreneurs that are working in area where they're, because of the um, conflict, uh, an area that used to be um, very harshly affected, there are simply no business opportunities and those entrepreneurs decide to go particularly to these areas in order to provide um, opportunities, which, which other entrepreneurs not, might not be doing. And um, talking about the, uh, the, 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 the Amazonas fires that, that, it, that you were mentioning that is happening because of, of the, the deforestation, not just there, but all in also other parts of the world where where forests are being cut down for several reasons that I mentioned initially also with 
uh, cattle growing and or, or timber let us being um, exploited from the forest. In Colombia, we are looking at how can we support local communities through social business approaches, again, in order to help them sustain their livelihoods so that they can um, um, uh, remain in the places um, under um, uh, dignified conditions with an income that is uh, sufficient with them and in accordance with the production of the forest. And our focus has been on indigenous communities, which, uh, community, which are communities that have a very deep understanding of the protect, not, not the protection, the conservation and know-how of um, um, the, the fauna and flora and how our natural systems work. And these communities, they are often engaged in uh, um, the manufacturing of artisan products or around uh, fishing, the production of, of Amazonic uh, fruits and products. And what they are lacking is the uh, several things. Um, it's uh, highlighting uh, two or three points here. It's the access to markets. Um, they are in very remote, very far areas. They are disconnected. Uh, often they are they only have electricity for two hours a day. So internet connection connection generally is a, is a problem. Also access uh, roads that are that are that are insufficient. And then again during the pandemic, it has become even more challenging. Uh, Colombia used to have to host. Uh, national artisan fairs, for example, where the net community could send at least one person there to present the products, which is now all of those fairs are canceled. So access to markets is, 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 is one big problem. And um, then um, for them, it's also the um, 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 uh, often connected to that, um, also feedback from the customers in ensuring quality control and the likes and the the um, um, let's say the um, that the, the products that are being produced um, are um, under uh, or do fulfill like the, the the let's say standards and likes of international buyers during which um, those communities could generate uh, more incomes for themselves and uh, and in the end it's also and this is where of course we also come in with um, helping them on uh, business development and financial skills. It's really like, how do you manage a small business? How do you manage such a also community-driven business? So these, these are some of the things where we are being engaged, where again, we see ourselves as, the, as uh, how can we empower other, be it single entrepreneurs that are setting up social businesses or community-based organizations like, like type two social businesses that are owned by an entire community that is working towards the protection of, of, of the forest in order to help them to sustain their, their livelihoods. Amazing, amazing, uh, you know, and Christina, actually you have been uh, heavily motivated by the Professor Yonos 30 movement and the last zero was actually the net carbon emissions, which is also uh, in relation to our, you know, UN, promoted, uh, you know, SDG goals, we see that there are uh, quite a few goals in the SDGs in, in, in relations to clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, and you name, you know, sustainable cities and communities, climate action in the life below and above the, uh, you know, surface, uh, you know, these are uh, all uh, relevant to your, your great work that you are actually doing. I'm, I'm very amazed by your work. What do you foresee, foresee, you know, uh, you, you know, coming up in the next five years to stop, you know, global warming? What do you see happening to your organization in the next, uh, you know, five and 10 years? Could you just uh, tell us a few things in that direction, the future things of your organization? Sure, yeah. I think um, the focus of um, us as UNO's Environment Hub, but us as a civilization, I would even say, as, as the world's population, need to be the, the decarbonization of our economies. I think this is, the, this is one of the, 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 the top goals next to reversing the process of biodiversity loss. 
I think these are the, the, the two uh, number two things that we should be focusing on. And um, um, in order to achieve this, it, it requires collaboration. Um, um, it's not that one organization or one stakeholder group can do this uh, on, on his or her own. We need to work together. And this is where I see the role of UNOS Environment Hub, who can become the platform uh, to bring stakeholders together. And again, this needs to be businesses, uh, governments, universities, the young generation, researchers, innovators, engineers, entrepreneurs, social business entrepreneurs, everyone, to bring them together to provide that platform, connect the different stakeholders, where we can also inject the social business thinking, solutions that we have already developed in the network. Uh, we can be the connector of connecting um, a group of, of you know, young people with an idea to someone capable of financing or providing the technology in order to, to deploy it and um, being the catalyst for that change. This is, this is where I see the role of, of UNOS Environment Hub. And, um, um, and I think there social business is, is again really the key for it. Professor Yunus always says social business is the demilitarized zone. And I think this is what, what can help us in bringing all of those stakeholders together because often when they have their, let's say within their stakeholder group meetings, there's often a lot of conflict or uh, different interests. But in social business, I think we have the opportunity to overcome those interests because profit is out of the scope. And, and this is our, our objective of really being the platform, bringing it together and being the, the, the catalyst in order to, to move things forward and achieve uh, the substantial impact. Like Sinat mentioned it in an introduction, um, we, we, climate change is real, there's no time left. The, the time is already up and we really need to um, start with the, the, with the change today that needs to happen. And um, one thing that I would also like to mention and where I see also a connection to the UNO Social Business Center network is technologies. Um, um, we need um, universities, we need research institute who can support with the development of climate friendly technologies. This can be related to recycling technologies, to new material sciences, to um, technologies that lead to uh, decarbonization of business activities that help us on the biodiversity loss. I think technologies will play a very, very crucial role in order to reverse this, this, this process and this vicious cycle that we need to stop until 2030. And um, this would be also my, my call out there for everyone from the academic network to, to please get in contact with us if they have ideas, if they have, um, if they want to get involved, um, we UNOS Environment Hub would be very pleased to, to organize and steer a working group of um, researchers uh, with backgrounds in natural sciences, in, in background in technologies um, that can uh, be developed and that can be offered and, and deployed in a social business setup. Thank you. Thank you very much, actually. One thing actually came into my mind in terms of funding opportunities, how you are going to actually tell us, the audience, even to know that the funding possibilities uh, for supporting this kind of initiatives, as you know that, well, there are some funding sources and uh, banks like, uh, you know, the Bank National de Paris, they do also fund for some, uh, you know, projects that are truly very relevant to changing the world. And where do you, you know, if someone, a layman, like, you know, someone asks you, where do you find the money to undertake these sort of businesses? And, uh, you know, who are usually interested in financing this kind of projects? Uh, if, if we even take the example of that uh, bank, uh, you know, National de Paris, uh, what are they doing actually? Uh, you know, whether we can involve or if anyone is interested in, they can be involved with those sources. Uh, what is your, uh, you know, guidelines for that? Okay, yeah, let me first answer your question regards to BNB Paribas and then I come back to the funding topic. Um, BNB Paribas um, um, got engaged with social business in a very interesting approach. They are supporting social business intrapreneurship 
meaning that employees of, of BNB Paribas can come up with social business ideas and then they run a selection process, a competition, and the best ideas are being selected and BNB Paribas supports them to, to implement them. So they are creating social business spin-offs, so to say, from the bank. And um, at, at UNIS Environment Hub, we got involved with two of such initiatives that were focused on the environment. Um, one I was briefly mentioning in the beginning is Climate Seed. That was actually the first social business that BNB Paribas um, created. And that is being led by a group of uh, 10 BNB Paribas former employees. And this is a, a platform um, for um, companies and organizations to neutralize and offset the unavoidable carbon emissions that an organization has. And um, it provides a transparent platform where all of the proceeds are going to projects um, on the other hand on the ground on green to green projects that are either neutralizing or capturing carbon emissions. And it goes even further that um, the buyers of the credits, they can select those projects according to the SDGs, because each of the projects that are capturing the CO2 or avoiding it um, are again contributing to different set of, of SDGs. And um, this was fun, one example of how, of how BNB Paribas got engaged on, on, on creating a social business and um, um, where um, we were supporting Climate Seed on their journey of setting it up as a social business under the social business principles. And we continue to work together in very close cooperation because in the end, we have the same objectives. Um, so there are a lot of synergies that can be used where we can partner up in order to work together. And as I said initially, I, I truly believe in the cooperation and the collaboration that we need in order to address the environment crisis. And the other um, case is, um, it's a current case that we are working on. Um, one um, employee that um, created a project called Green On, um, that is um, um, a project um, for the improvement of energy efficiency in France. It is a service that the social business um, offers for um, companies who are doing um, renovations in their buildings, for example, in order to make a building more energy efficient. And um, the social business helps them in getting subsidies from the government and in incorporating that in the renovations of that building. Um, that can be anything from, you know, in improving the windows so that the house keeps the energy towards um, powering it with um, solar panels or uh, changing the current uh, car fleet to an e-car fleet. And um, um, again, since it's an environment-related social business, UNOS Environment Hub is supporting the entrepreneur um, in the development of, of the business plan and helping it in, in the incorporation of that initiative currently within BNB Paribas to become an, an independent social business. And um, I, think it's a, I think it's a great example for, for a big uh, global bank, for a big business in order to uh, support um, climate friendly solutions under, under the social business framework. And um, I think it has several benefits for them because it's something that is taken with a lot of enthusiasm by the employees. So um, this is one example we are also for other companies to follow the, the same, same lead. And to your other question on how we as UNOS Environment Hub are funding our programs and projects, um, the funding comes from a variety of different stakeholders. Um, I mentioned the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, who is um, so financially supporting our Zero Plastic Waste Cities program. So this is coming from, from the private sector. We also uh, receive funding from um, public um, organizations, institutions. For example, GIZ, the German Development Agency, is supporting our work. And we also have other international donor organizations and foundations with whom we are working. So it's, it's, it's pretty manifold, a different uh, set of, of organizations um, who are supporting and, and funding us. And I think there are always also um, 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 uh, different opportunities out there where new um, um, funding ways can be created. 
Uh, just earlier today, I was approached by a researcher, by an academic who um, is very fascinated and likes the work that we do at UNOS Environment Hub. And um, she proposed, um, and she saw like a funding opportunity again from a public fund, and she proposed um, to work together on a proposal where she would take the lead. And if the funding would be granted, she would work for, for us at UNOS Environment Hub as a scientific researcher. And um, so I think there, there are many uh, different possible options that, that one can go. And, um, um, and uh, yeah, so these are some of the ideas on, on how we have been working and um, where um, our partners come from. Well, thank you. We are at the very end of our time, but then again, I have my last question to you because we all know that, well, the objective of social business is to resolve social problem, economic problem, environmental issues that truly affects humanity. And you know that, well, you know, Social Business Center is working across the world, uh, in, you know, in that dimension. And can uh, YSBCs uh, get involved with your initiatives and if it you know, if it is how, uh, in which way they can actually be part of it. My second, uh, you know, last very questions to you, being an academia, you know, from part of the academy, I would also like to see that, well, your ideas, how can we actually create uh, a platform or your help, even from my, for my institution that our students need to know uh, how they are going to start the idea of social businesses in line with solving environmental problems. And uh, there are components of, uh, you know, uh, doing that things, uh, you know, business in an efficient manner, uh, whether you would be able to support us in that direction, because there are stories that you have been telling me, it seems like that you can write the case studies of different uh, scenario in across the world even that you have experimented. So, so far uh, the last question that well, well in, in which way you think that well, YSBC can uh, be involved with your initiatives? Yeah, thank you very much for this uh, very good question. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, um, we are really looking for universities and, and research institutes to support us with their work on developing um, climate solutions. And uh, I mentioned earlier the need for technological innovations. So this is one area where um, 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 is a way to, to get engaged with us, um, but also other areas that are related to the topics that, that we managed initially on, on, on the research side, when it comes to developing new business models for a circular economy, for helping us in identifying um, the, the impact indicators and the necessary impact measurement needs when it comes for uh, choosing and location over the other. Where do we start? Where, where is, the, where is the, the issue the greatest? How can we determine plastic waste leakage so that we find the right spot for deploying the solution? What should be the indicators in order to measure the results both on the environment and socially? helping us design um, impact measurement strategies once the solutions are in place so that we can actually show the results of our work. And then um, um, for, for um, engaging your students and um, how can we uh, make sure that um, we put the mindset of, of young people towards this topic. I think social business idea competitions are a very great way. We were just organizing with three universities in Colombia, a uh, social business um, plan competition, and we received many great ideas from young students, all focused around the topic of, of, of the environment. And um, throughout that competition, we were also organizing some, some lectures where we were giving some, um, some guidelines, some, some inspiration of successful business models, which I think are always very helpful, so people can get an idea of how a solution could look like, but also providing tools with how do you get started, how do you start developing a social business idea. And then um, we um, presented the ideas um, in a similar setting like here on, on, on Zoom, where we invited everyone else to watch in and see it. Again, this will 
you know, create um, uh, um, awareness, creates inspiration for others and also for the young people to connect them with others who might help them in then implementing and turning the ideas into reality. Because again, that's what we need. Again, we need those thousands and millions of solutions that need to be developed locally in order to change the problem on a global level. Wonderful, yeah. I think, you know, you know at the end, I would like mm -hmm. to say that, well, few things that we have come up from your even discussion, I know that, well, we have been also doing the social business plan competition even earlier in face-to-face -face mode, but we can also do it by Zoom, you know, and also connect the global bodies to get the ideas and also sharing the thoughts and knowledge uh, and to enrich our own knowledge and our students, you know, knowledge. The other thing that I also can see from your discussion, the way that you have been talking about the impact measurement of, uh, you know, the you know, impact measurement is something very important, whether we can actually sort out some indicator and also come up with some, you know, social or environmental indexes that are going to be used for further research. So those score and indexes would be something that we really need to work on actually. So I would like to thank you very much that today we have become very enriched in terms of your uh, you know, lecture and also your thoughts that you have shared with us. And I'm sure that well in future we can also uh, interact heavily with you and also the connecting you with our Bangladeshi academic institutions so that our young generation, our future generation of the students are going to be more cautious about the natural calamity and catastrophe, the disasters and also flood, famine and environmental degradation, those things that are happening even in a country like Bangladesh heavily. And we would also be motivating the young generations to be very uh, focus on resolving the social and environmental issues by designing even businesses in a sustainable manner so that they can see their own career and also we can get a eco-friendly you know neighborhood and also you know country as well, as well as the planet earth that we can have a green planet to live and that's what is actually today's discussion that I can conclude at the very end. Thank you very much, Christina Zagar, for your uh, beautiful presentation on environmental issues and also carbon emission issues and designing businesses and also helping the community and different countries across the world. Thank you. I would like to now call upon uh, Jinat uh, Islam to close, you know, go for the closing session. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Christina Kren. Thank you very much, Professor Hanlan. This was really an insightful conversation. I think um, we touched on very important aspects. Not only did we get to know about the activities of the Environment Hub, but especially for, I think, students, for our YSBCs, for which we hold these webinars, that uh, something that they can carry forward. I think, as Christina mentioned, the um, uh, competitions for students, I've uh, seen the students are often interested in environmental issues because it is something real. You know, when there's a flood, everyone's affected. When there's a heat wave, everyone's affected. So these are issues that we are affected directly or indirectly, and we must, must, must act now. There is no time. Uh, in fact, um, in this pandemic, we have crossed over to the areas where the animals exist. And because of our perhaps careless attitude that we we are in this pandemic and not only there is loss of lives, loss of millions of uh, dollars, um, this damage will continue on for, for a long time and we must not let such happen in the future. So our time is to act now. Um, if you have any ideas, um, please write to us. Um, if you want to do um, social business competition in your school or university around the environment, please let us know. We can help to guide and I'm sure Christina and the Environment Hub will also be interested. Uh, another interesting aspect that Christina mentioned was the, um, the entrepreneurship within companies like BNP Paribas did. So that's an interesting initiative, uh, especially in the, with focus to environment that companies all over the can, world can also replicate. So thank you for sharing these. Um, thank you so much, Professor Hanam, for bringing out all these through the conversation. So with, with, with this, we end our session. And uh, now we will play some slides on our upcoming sessions and upcoming events. So thank you very much. Um, we'll see you again for the next session on January 18th. Uh, our tech team, please play the slides for our next lecture.
Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.